Perhaps the greatest challenge with respect to financial reporting is how do we present information, financial information about the firm, in such a way as to ensure that it is understandable and useful to the users of those financial statements. That requires that we have some overarching framework which dictates the information that's presented, what's presented, how it's presented, how it's, and how users can access the information. And that's why we need to have some sort of framework for financial reporting. If we think about financial reporting, in the ex at the end of the day, it really involves a process of combining a, an enormous diversity of financial information about the firm, and it's a process of aggregating information. And aggregation, if it's going to be successful, requires consistency. Consistency in the rules which dictate how the, inf the information is collected, consistency in terms of how those rules are applied, and that's going to dictate very much why we're preparing financial reports, what's presented in financial reports, where it's presented in financial reports, and how it's presented. So if we think about financial reporting, if we're going to meet our objectives, we need to have some sort of consistency that exists across financial reporting. We need to have this, we need to have this consistency to make sure that we meet our objectives. And we have a number of statements which help us to achieve this. Perhaps first and foremost is the conceptual framework. And the conceptual framework to me identifies all the things that accountants can agree upon about what general purpose financial reporting represents. Some might see it as a normative theory of what accounting should be. Others might see it as being more of a descriptive theory of what we actually do. That's not important for our purposes here. Rather, it's sufficient that we recognize that the Conceptual Framework Project is part of an integral part of ensuring that we have consistency in general purpose financial reporting. Consistency across the statements that we prepare for firms, consistency across the various statements that firms prepare, consistency in terms of how we conceive assets and how we account for them, and the same for liabilities. We need to ensure that we have consistency in terms of transactions which have a similar economic consequence being accounted for in a similar way. Our conceptual framework project at the end of the day helps maintain our purpose and our cohesive and general purpose financial reports. To date, our conceptual framework project contains eight chapters, and these start with the objective of the financial reporting, which is very well developed. And it also contains other chapters, such as chapter three on the reporting entity, and let's just say that's considerably less well developed. But the important thing to appreciate about this framework is it does very much define why we have financial reporting and what are the characteristics of financial reports and what goes into the financial reports. Supporting the conceptual framework are another set of accounting standards, and I call them supporting standards because they flesh out some of the detail that's not in the framework. I think it's fair to say that the information of these standards would just as well have been included in the conceptual framework pro statement, but there's probably a whole range of technical reasons why that wasn't done so. However, from an educational point of view, I think it's much easier to consider these statements as being an integral part of the conceptual framework and the, frame, the financial reporting framework more generally. These statements are uh, IS1, which very much dictates the actual form of the financial reports, how the information is presented, IS8, which is concerned with accounting policies, and IS10, which dictates whether items are recognized in the financial statements or whether they're events which happen after the end of the reporting period, in which case they're probably excluded. The idea of this, this framework is it, it provides us with an overview about what the financial statements generally look like, but it doesn't actually go on to discuss what the contents of those reports are or how they're calculated. And so I think in combination with understanding the context and how financial reports appear, once we understand that, we're ready to begin our journey on working through international financial reporting standards and understanding what they look like. I think that when we understand the context and the framework which is used to cover or address financial reporting generally, it provides us with a very efficient manner in which to, and structured manner in which to consider the accounting standards as they're given to us today. Thank you.